Welcome back, welcome back to yet another video, my powerful MVP family, and welcome to all the new subscribers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your support. I did the video about um, the porties, like the people who might be deported, and if they know that what their situation, you know, what they should be doing right now. And that took off like wildfire. I didn't know there were so many of you who appreciated. We had so many comments. I think this is the most common. No, maybe I've had more, like a few more videos that had a lot of comments. A lot of likes for the video. And I want to thank all of you. I know some of you were a little bit, you know, but as I, in life, guys, we never, we don't need to, to laugh at people. We don't need to laugh at people's situation. We don't need to find reasons to put anybody down. America was built on the backs of immigrants. Let us not forget that. Jamaica, all of these places that they went into Africa and took our ancestors out to come in here and do the heavy lifting for them. You know, so white people and, and white kids who privilege because they got the hand down from their, their, their parents or for parents or their ancestors who took it away from the black people. They went into Africa and they, they, they ravished Africa with all its diamonds and gold and salt and all the good things. They went in and they did that. And then they come in, when you look in Jamaica, you see they come in and the government sell them land instead of leasing the land to them or find a way where they, where, you know, to, to, to do better business. So they come in and own everything. One person says Jamaica, was, they own nothing. You know, everything owned in Jamaica is owned by 21 different <laughs> nations except Jamaicans. Grace Kennedy, um, the, the cement factory, the all of these things but they forget that the, the black people were not given an opportunity they weren't given some pieces of land what they got were the the hills and the stones and the 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 the, the rocky pieces you look at all the land that were that was supporting um sh the sugar factories in jamaica look at holland look at how many acres of, of flat beautiful land they took over down there Look in Hamden, look in, in Trelawney, look at Hamden Estates, look at all the places that they captured and, 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 and planted sugar cane and, and, and all that. It's not hilly and, 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 and God forsaken. They're all beautiful flat lands. You look at Long Pond, look at the property, the land, the acres that they captured, that they used to, to, for sugar cane to support the, 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 the sugar factories. They didn't go up in the hills and, and, and dig stone. They pushed the people, the, 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 the little people who, 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 the supervisors and the this and that who stays on, on, the, on, their, on their, their, their estates and, and make sure everything is, is well done and everything is in place. Look at what they give them to live in, the little shacks, the little, you know, the, the, the little... <laughs> I wonder if some of you ever look around and go in these places and see what it was like. My father died when I was only two years old. He was a supervisor in the, in the, in the Hamden estate. And so when you, you get to go back, then you look at the conditions, you just shake your head. When they burn that sugar cane, they, 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 the bosses, they, they, they're not exposed to the black suit that comes from those 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 things that fly in the air when they burn the sugar cane. And when everything is done and, and, and the sugar is made and the rum is made and the all the things that they get from it, all the, the, the profits, where does it go? Does it stay in Jamaica? No, it goes back to their country. So Jamaica will, can, will, will struggle. All these black places will struggle because that's how they, you know, they're the ones with the resources. You have these people who come in Jamaica, sell them property, they build their hotels, and what do they pay the workers? What do they pay them? What do they pay them? Peanuts! To make sure rooms are cleaned and food is ready for, for all these people who are paying thousands of dollars to them. And where is the money spent? Is it spent in Jamaica to help the schools? Is it help in Jamaica to help 
restore the hospitals and make them worthwhile for people to, to get proper care? Huh? Do they buy equipment for, to run the hospitals? And then our people have that mentality of stealing and taking and taking and, 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 and taking from their own people. And so the saga continues. How can we own anything? How can we be better? We cannot progress the way we're supposed to. Our schools, look at the conditions of our schools. Look at the conditions in our schools that children have to sit in and learn. Why? Why does it have to be like that? This is not like, you know, the kids are going and they're getting everything free. They have to buy books. Thousands of dollars I had to send out for, 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 for little Kayla. Kayla is in the second grade. And they have so many books on the list. And you know they're not using these things. But so many books on the list because somebody has to get rich of the little kids going to school whose parents cannot afford it. And some can afford it, but I mean, they could be doing something else with, <laughs> with their monies, right? Because there's always something else. Jamaicans are not like rich and everything is, is they're, they're, they're making sacrifices to make sure things get done. But I look on the book list, say, the dictionary. I don't see Kayla using a dictionary. I don't even know if she uses it three or four. I know she uses it twice. But yet they have this whole overwhelming set of things. Kids need to learn math. They need to be able to read. Right? And so the rest of the stuff that they're telling parents, buy this, buy that, buy this, buy that. For what reason? We went to school, we, we were getting one reading book. I don't remember we had a math book. I know it's times have changed. But no one, you know, kids need a foundation in arithmetic. If they understand how to add, multiply, subtract, and divide, they are going to be able to manage the other stuff. So in primary school, in the primary grades, they don't need to be overwhelmed with all these heap of things that they're not using. The year ends and they haven't used half of the books. But it isn't what it is. It's like the rich must get richer and they pump out the books and somebody's friend and somebody, oh, they have to have this and they have to have that. To do what? To do what? Reading is reading is reading. They don't have to have specific books to be able to read. Reading is reading. Teaching them to write sentences. They don't need a book to go learn to write a sentence when you can talk to them and you can model for them and you can help them to do those things. It's, it's ridiculous of what's going on. The unnecessary spendings to put money in somebody else's pocket for no reason. But that's not my, my problem tonight. As I said, a lot of people, you know, some of you were talking the smack about, you know. And, and I said, we, we don't need to ridicule the immigrants. Immigrants in, 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 is, it's, it's, it's who build countries. Maybe they feel like they're doing well now because they have robots to do a lot of what the immigrants will do because they know their people are not going to do some of the work that these illegal people come in and be willing to do because they need a dollar to send back to help their families where they're coming from. A lot of you went away, you helped your family. Some of you ran left your children and you had to send back a lot to make sure your kids got an education and your kids were able to go to school. Some of them, even though monies came, the kids still didn't get a chance to, to, to do what they need to do. But for those families who made it possible to help the children while the parents went away to get work and, and, to, and to, to help you back home, hats off to you guys. I say thank you for that support. Many of you took the monies, and I remember the lady in, in St. Catherine, and, and she was in England when England opened and was taking everybody in to do the housework and to do the, the all this kind of stuff, you know. Um, she got a chance to go away. The, the, the sister got a chance to go. She has two children who were born in England, and she sent money home for them to, for her brother to build a home for her. And when she came home, she went crazy, mad, 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 out of her mind, raw-born crazy. 
Because when she left England and come home and thinking that she was coming to a nice home because she sent the money to build, the guy took the money and built up, hit their house, built a nice concrete house with grill and all, you know, the works, furnished it, refrigerator, everything up in there. And she came home to nothing. A little board house. She 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 get a little a little board house. Two two rooms. Two rooms. She and her children, that's what that's what she end up with. Mad. Went crazy. So I'm just tonight my message is to tell you guys what not to do. As I said, I'm no expert. I was a teacher in America for over twenty seven years. And so I'm no expert, but I know you have to first not be angry. Don't follow those people with the loud mouths and getting angry and disrespectful. Don't do that. Keep your dignity. Keep your dignity. Think and thank God. Just give thanks to God for all of his blessings. Everything is for a reason and he will see you through. So give him thanks first and foremost for every opportunity that you took and, and, and that you granted to your families back home, you didn't live for yourselves, that you helped and helped and helped some more. And there will be ungratefulness. So that's what I'm telling you. Stay focused and pray. Stay focused and pray. Give God thanks for every opportunity you got. And you worked hard and you, you did the best that you could. And now that it looks like you might be coming home, I'm just telling you, keep your sanity. Don't get angry. Anger doesn't help any situation. Okay? Calm, calmness, and patience, and asking God to pay back for you. Not You don't come back and try to fix it. You ask God to fix it. And you see how it's fixed in peace, and there's unity, and you smile in your heart, and you keep going. Just don't give up. Don't get sick. Just stay focused. And as I said, those of you who need to ship things, don't sit there and think that I'm waiting for the last minute and my friend, people who are your friends now when you're there are not going to be your friends when they feel like you're not going to be able to come back, to go back to America. They feel that way. You might get the opportunity to go back. They might punish you according, I think they used to say the amount of years that you, that you run off over there, like if you get a chance, somebody marries to you or some, whatever opportunity you have. Some of you have children who have, have grown up and, and will be able to file for you again. But they said, like when the paperwork come in, they're going to, you'll have to wait out some percentage of the time that you had run off in their country. And then in the meantime, just make sure that you, you, you get a little piece of paper, a little piece of something with, for education. So if you come back, you don't have to go back to work, that you're marketable. You know, that's one of the problems. You know, a lot of people don't have anything to, to not, not all them not have nothing. And so it's hard to get a job that can pay them a living wage. All right. So don't get frustrated. Look back at the benefits that you received while you were there. Look and remember, you've been there. You have children in the system. Good, they are citizens, so they are entitled to support. But there are children who went up who are not documented children. And you watch, you, you look at the, the school system. I was a teacher, and I know, instead of ordering because they get free books, they get free education, free books, free this, everything free as it relates to education up there. And I see times when we only would have needed 15 books, but because we have 20 kids who came in, then we have to order extra books for them. You know, free lunch, they get free lunch, they get services. And all of that overwhelms their system as well. So let us not get frustrated. Let us look at the blessings that we received while we were there. Let us be grateful and don't curse or bite the hands that feed you. Don't ever bite hands that feed you. You run off, you did the wrong thing, but you did it for a reason. A lot though, I'm talking to those of you who did it for a reason. I'm not talking to those who just wanted to do it because their friend is there and they want the latest. No, I'm talking to those of you who have sacrificed family, who have sacrificed so much in order to help them. 
So look at those aspects of, of the whole thing. And instead of getting bitter and angry and cussing up and doing those things, look at all that you have gained. Look at all you have gained. The opportunity to work and make enough that you could send something home. Just be thankful for those things. So take a deep breath. Yes, it's not easy. But what I don't want you to do is to become ungrateful. Ungrateful is worse than witchcraft. It says so in the Bible. It is worse than witchcraft. So don't become ungrateful. Don't become unthankful. You still give God thanks. And whatever the, 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 the turnout is, remember they have to go after the criminals first. And after they go after the criminals, then probably it's going to be the regular people next. So just keep praying, keep hoping. Do what you have to do with you. you you're ready to come, you save up enough that you can, you, can, you can do something with it. I don't know. Somebody asked about shipping company. I lived in Connecticut and I used reliable shipping, R-E-L-I-A-B-L-E, -E, reliable shipping. And I've never had a problem. I've never lost a barrel. I've never had a pro well, one, one little teeny problem I had. I, I did support a couple of people with heat press and the cricket and the shirts and vinyl and all that. And when I shipped the, that barrel um, with the stuff in it, um, one of the, the heat press, the, the power thing fell off. Um, it broke off. And when I reached out to the to the guy who did the shipping, who did the delivery for me, because most of my barrels, I deliver them. I get them delivered. And, and because a lot of barrels are shipped to Jamaica, people didn't ask me. I just know that they, I knew that their situation was, you know, and I said, let me just ship a barrel. Some of them were surprised. You know, I shipped a barrel, but what I didn't do, I didn't allow them to go find the money to go clear it. So I just had it ship it to Kingston and the guy there, the calling brokers, he cleared it for me and delivered them. So I didn't mind paying the extra because a lot of times by the time people have to go hire a vehicle and then they go down there and they, they heap a rigmarole and pay a little desk and everybody wants something to, you know, you end up spending so much. And I said, you didn't ask me for the barrel. I chose to send it and I don't expect you to go find money to go clear it. That would be heartless. So I made sure that they went. So I've never had a problem, but except that one time when I spoke to the guy, he um he didn't respond. I said to him, it looks like you guys either take something out and when you put it, I don't know what happened. And he didn't respond. But I didn't take it personal. I didn't I didn't take it personal because now when I came Again, they were able to bring my stuff right to the door, right into the house for me. And so you, you hold on to relationships, you build and, and you ignore the little stuff. Because a lot of times some of us will make the little stuff become so big and blown out that we lose valuable people in our lives. So that's the company I use if you're in that area. I don't know about, I know my sister Dawkins, Kayla's mom, she use somebody in New York. She's in New York and um, there's somebody she used in the Brooklyn or Bronx. I don't know what area the person comes from, the company is, but I think they clear the bar for you. You go to their, their where, whatever they have, their space to pick up your barrel. So different things I will ask, get information from her and I will try to remember to pin it in the comment section for those who are asking about shipping companies, you got to suffer, just take chances in life and understand, you know, like there was a time I know that I just got up and and I was teaching and they expected me to do a best portfolio. What garbage. And I says, no, I'm not doing a best portfolio. I was teaching in New York for year, for so long. And I said, I'm coming to you with experience. You look at the, 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 the level of work my students do. That's how you evaluate me. You're not going to have me do no best portfolio, a whole lot of bull crap, a whole lot of pages of nothing. Uh, you have to do a video. 
and you have to to write to do a uh, um like you have to 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 think about your the, the thing look at the lessons that you teach and then to go over it and for what reason teaching is an art and the way I do my thing, you're not going to evaluate it to say, oh, it's not the right way because I didn't do it your way. In the video, they expect you. I, I've never seen anyone who did a video with all the children in on their roster sitting in that video. Everybody, could you keep John for me? Could you keep Kayla for me? Because I don't want them to mess up my video. So at no point in these videos are classroom management evaluated. Yet that's the biggest piece of the whole teaching process. Because if you cannot manage the kids in front of you, teaching cannot happen. So they give all these little young, you know, <laughs> kids, they, they, oh yeah, you're certified to teach. Then when they get in the classroom, reality hits them. Can't manage the kids can't manage the kids so the kids learn absolutely nothing so i tell them i said i'm not going to stress myself out to do any any hundred page and nothing or reflect on this and reflect on that so i resigned when i resigned i just got up and and just leave for me in 1999 when i returned to jamaica that's it my brother bought a house. I got up. I said, take the furniture. I didn't worry about, oh, I'm going to sell this. I'm going to, what am I going to do? I told my brother, I said, guys, come take what you want. I'm done. I'm tired. I'm not going to sit and stress my life out. And I came home to Jamaica and the sunlight did me well. My children loved it, loved it, loved it. To get up and there was no winters to worry about. They had sunlight right through. They loved it. Again, so I don't sit and hold on to material things and let it prevent me from keeping my peace of mind. I walk away from them. Who wants it? Take it, take it, take it. What you need, take it. <laughs> and as much as you get older, when you get older, you don't want to be dusting and dusting. And you know how long it, how hard it is to maintain. The other day I gave the young lady the, the, the heat press and the, 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 the cricket. The cricket doesn't get dusty. But the heat press, it's black. So every lick of dust that drops on it, you see it and you got to be too old for that. Life must get easier for me as I get older. It shouldn't become hard and complicated at all. And so I'm just saying to you guys tonight, just don't forget God. Hold on to his hand. If you haven't formed a relationship with him, I said, form one. Form a relationship with him. Talk to him. He knows he understands and he will open doors for you he will lead the way for you i'm telling you just form a relationship with him and watch him do what needs to be done so again let me just thank every one of you who have been supporting the channel helping the channel grow and you saw a shorts earlier today and you know that means christmas is coming and we would like you to purchase something from the spring store the link is in the descriptions so once you go in the descriptions guys the link is there just click on it and go buy a mug pay something support miss bev's production see i'm not taxing you to send me a donation i'm asking you to support the store if you buy something you're supporting me so please go in and, and help me you help me I, it helps not just me but it helps kayla I, like today she went on a trip beautiful i was so happy i sent her you know, 2500 for the trip. Plus, you know, pocket money. I gave her $1,450 for her trip. And she was beaming. She came out of the bus and she ran up. And her arms are wide open. And she just ran into me. She says, Grandma, I love you. I love you, Grandma. It makes you feel like a million dollars. Those moments are so priceless. And she came in and she sat next to me. I said, how was your trip? I said, it was good. And I said, tell me about it. And she talked about, it was a 4-H club, I think, trip or something. She talked about the animals and she talked about, just beautiful. And I said, should you take tomorrow off and get a rest? Day? Nope, tomorrow is school. I'm going to school. So little things like these guys, they're blessings. 
you, you appreciate them because they're priceless. There's no amount of money that could, can buy these things. And she said, Grandma, you know I love you. And she said it as she comes in here. And she saw the right the farmer lady came to there about right banana. I got the coconut. She, she chopped the coconuts for me. And I had the water emptied into a jug. And I asked her to chop the thing. Because usually we drink the water, but we throw out the, the food in and the jelly. And so today I had her chop them. And I left Kayla's up there. And man, you should see that little picnic. She kept down in her dinner or something. I gave her a spoon and boy, she enjoyed that thing. So these are the little moments I'm telling you guys. It, it's, it's good. She comes and she sits next to me and she puts her head on my shoulder. And I don't know what it is. And I said, um, I asked her, why do, you why, do you, why do you love me, Kayla? Because when we love, there's a reason why we love. She said, because you take care of me. And I said, thank you. I love you too. And that's it. So guys, these moments, you create them. No matter what your situation is, you create them. Now listen to the noise in the market. A lot of time, all that noise and there's no sale. So listen, just pray to God. Ask him for guidance. If you have to pack your things, start shipping it out. If you have some way to ship them to. And, and, and if you are there long enough, come home. This sort of thing is gonna is going to tear um, you know, but put things in place. Don't wait for people to come and treat you badly. Then you're gonna cry out and I'm not going, I'm not leaving, I'm not. Don't do that. You have spent enough time, you have done what you needed to do, and it's what it is. It's what it is. Give thanks for what you have achieved. Give thanks. And make the transition be smooth and a beautiful experience for you. Don't let it be bitter and ugly. Make it be a beautiful experience for you. Jamaica is bad. It has a lot of issues. It has a whole lot of issues. But it's better to be in Jamaica and treated like a human being than to be somewhere where nobody wants you, where they don't need you. The people, a lot of people who voted in that red thing right there, it sends the message. They don't care that who built the things that they're enjoying. They don't care. They just want to tell you that we don't want you here. And they're happy. They're happy. I see a couple of them commented on the video, oh, um, whatever. You just ignore the ignorance. You know, you just ignore the ignorance. So... This is a long video. It shouldn't have been so long, 27 minutes. But again, thank you guys for all your support. Thank you, thank you so kindly. And we will continue onward and upwards, right? If you can't be good, be careful. Well, good, do good. Go shop in the, <laughs> Go shop in the store for Miss Bev. Much love.